Our next presentation is the trick to managing trade spend with Walmart. We have three speakers, John Sheridan and Doug Lucan of Lotus Bakeries North America, and Rick Penza, CEO of CPG Toolbox. So without further ado, gentlemen, the podium is yours. Thank you, John. So uh, what we'll be talking about today will be, um, let's see, we'll get to our slide here. So we want to talk about something that's very contemporary. Walmart recently made uh, uh, overtures to suppliers to come to the party, if you will, to, to enrich the deals that are currently in place in their EDLP or EDLC uh, offerings. And so there's a lot of uh, 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 agitation about that around the uh, consumer industry, consumer products industry. And so we want to talk about that today. What does that mean? Where does the money come from to address some of these additional requests? We also want to take a look at how do you follow up on some of the information that we want to look at using just a spreadsheet or is there a better way to do that? And so we've got a couple of tips and tricks uh, that we'd like to talk about, about how to work with Walmart in some of these environments where they're asking for more money or different terms, where does the money come from? And we'd like to also introduce Lotus Bakeries who have also kind of worked through uh, these issues at Walmart or in the process of working through. And they're using a tool that they have been able to sort of uh, graduate out of, out of spreadsheets and into this tool. And then we'll have some time for questions and answers. So as we, as we mentioned just a second ago, Walmart has put the squeeze on, uh, uh, on, uh, on their suppliers. And Reuters came out with a, a pretty interesting article about a week or two ago uh, talking about this whole, this whole issue. So as their earnings have sagged, or as they've actually taken more money into their employee um, uh, salary program, the suppliers are now being asked to come up with additional ways to sort of help fund that. That, that activity and different things like different terms uh, or payment terms are being uh, bantered about and new fees for, for warehouse, warehousing goods and, and, and placement on store shelves are also being bantered about. And the question is, where is this money coming from? So that's what we'd like to talk about a little bit today to see uh, if we can come up with some ideas. And so first of all, we, the, the question we want to kind of look at is, can my team see the critical metrics so that I can answer the question, where is the money coming from? So those critical metrics might be sales. You know, what are my sales doing? What are my accruals doing? So am I, am I tracking accruals in a spreadsheet environment, and which is a very manual kind of labor-intensive process? How about my spend, and can I connect my spend to the events that were that we're, that we're dealing with and, and, and profitability. And, and, and above all of that, can I tie sales, accrual, spend, and profitability to individual SKUs so I can understand my mix? So then there's another question. Are we taking funds that are accrued on profitable SKUs and now spending those funds on maybe higher volume but less profitable SKUs? And that can be an issue that we, we would like to uh, to make sure that we, we keep, our, keep our hands around. And as we mentioned a second ago, can my team see the profitability of my SKUs? And so uh, do I know the real profitability? And if I'm taking money off of higher profit SKUs in the accrual funds and I'm now moving them over and leveraging those on my higher velocity SKUs, Am I actually selling those higher velocity SKUs at a loss? And that's a question we, we would need to be able to answer. And then will these increased demands actually put, a, put an increase on my deduction uh, management activity? And how do I manage my deductions? Am I managing my deductions in spreadsheets? Or how, how is, what is the best way to manage that whole, that whole uh, situation? And then finally, what is the profitability of my product mix, and can we see that profitability? So we've got a little quiz that we'd like to kind of throw up here and, and kind of see where your pains are. Maybe we can kind of tailor the meeting on the fly as we start to talk about some of the pains. But if you would just click 
what your biggest pain point is when you're working with Walmart, be interesting for the group to kind of see what that looks like. John, you want to take over from there? Sure. It's, uh, it's managing variable rate accrual funds, production management time consuming, maintenance of forecast spreadsheet, don't know profitability of SKU mix or other. Please make your selection and submit. Seconds. Okay, skip to results. Okay, you can take it away, Rick. Very good, thank you. So, um, I'd like to introduce John Sheridan with Lotus Bakeries, and he leads the Walmart team for Lotus. And we'll kind of talk a little bit about some of the supplier pain points that uh, that he has uh, encountered and how he's been able to sort of circumnavigate those or address them in a manner that takes a lot of the, 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 the hard work of spreadsheets out and has a tool that would be more visible, more broadly visible across the organization. John? Thanks, Rick. Um, yes, yeah, certainly uh, over the last few months, uh, there's been uh, some nervous, nervousness uh, across suppliers in the system from the letters that, uh, that Walmart sent out. Certainly no tool is going to address that in and of itself, but I'd just say um, you know, from the start that, that having the tool and access to the data uh, certainly put me in a better position in terms of having some of the conversations, not only with the customer, but also internally uh, as an account representative of my own company. But some of the pain points uh, that I've seen uh, historically uh, without you know, having uh, a tool like what we're talking about today, working from spreadsheets, really limited visibility uh, into what, what's been spent versus what's been accrued. Um, I think the, the tool that we're talking about today provides great visibility from a top line sales perspective to a send, spend perspective uh, and all the way down to a profitability perspective. Also, um, a lot of time waste, wasted uh, updating spreadsheets across multiple product lines and for multiple audiences, be they with the customer, with my own uh, customer sales team, or with my internal partners back at corporate. Um, I think the advantage of having one source of information, kind of a Bible, if you will, that everyone can refer to in real time, has been a, a great enabler. Uh, and that leads to the third point there in terms of not having that one source of, of data. Uh, I see a lot of challenges in terms of forecasting. Uh, be that on a volume level or on a financial forecast level, um, not having that full visibility uh, that, that updates in real time uh, is, a, is a challenge. But really, at, at the end of the day, I, I think we all know uh, in, in our industry and what we do that, that not knowing uh, and not having access to all that information really uh, leaves doubt, uh, and, and it doesn't enable you to have the peace of mind that you would otherwise otherwise have with, uh, with the tool that we're talking about today. Great. Thank you, John. So, uh, so talking about strategy then, how do we bridge this gap um, to, uh, to sort of bring to Walmart this additional, these additional funds? Obviously, you can call back to, to corporate and say, got to have more money, like the, like the college kid calling back to dad. Uh, they may say, uh, so sad, find the money in what you've got. And if that's the case, then how do we manage that? Where do we get, that in, where do we get those funds from to be able to, um, to now manage this demand for additional funding uh, uh, for our particular products and our, and our programs? And we think visibility is the key to that. Visibility to sales, visibility to accruals, uh, and your spending efforts and your profitability, we think, is key to this whole effort. And so, um, if you start to, to look at there, there was, a, there was an actually an interesting Harvard um, uh, uh, article that came out not too long ago that talked about or looked into the trade promotion activity within the consumer packaged goods industry. And they sort of segmented the consumer goods companies that they dealt with into winners and losers. And uh, the, the idea was, are the winners spending more and therefore having more, more profitable and more successful promotions, or is there something else that's going on? 
And it was interesting that they found that the, 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 the winners, that is to say, those manufacturers that had successful promotions, that promotions that, that drove profitability, promotions that had incremental lift, were not necessarily spending better. Rather, they were spending smarter. And, of course, you can't spend smarter until you have visibility. And they found that these, quote, smarter or winner, uh, winners were actually spending with a great deal more visibility, understanding how they can navigate and, uh, and where they could find funding activity, where they could find profitable, fro profitable opportunities because they had absolute visibility. And they were able to manage that product mix with a whole lot more visibility so they were able to tweak and manage the profitability overall, therefore having more successful uh, promotions that they were able to classify as, as winning promotions. So while suppliers do spend a lot of money, they, 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 they are accruing this money. And typically within the U.S., most manufacturers will have uh, accrual funds that they will work with to sort of su support the Robinson Patman Act of fair and, fair and equitable spending. But the question is, is oftentimes suppliers will spend money that is accrued by slower moving uh, but yet more profitable SKUs so they can leverage those funds on higher volume, uh, although sometimes lower profitable SKUs. And so the true cost of moving that money around between brands and or between SKUs can often be hidden. And um, the, the real trick is how do we realign those funds and still maintain profitability? So while I may have an accrual rate of, let's say, 15% on a particular SKU, um, the profitability um, that SKU may be diminished because I'm actually taking funding from another brand or other SKUs and then leveraging that against that the the more profitable or the less profitable the higher velocity SKU. So how do I see that amount of money that I'm accruing on funds? How do you see it? Are you seeing those those types of funds in spreadsheets and are you able to connect the pieces so that you're able to kind of drive down to the to the to the raw profitability of a given SKU? taking into consideration all the funding that's being leveraged uh, against that SKU. And can I actually see additional funding to, to be able to take advantage of uh, incremental spiking opportunities as well? So visibility, we think, is absolutely key to this whole thing. Um, John, any thoughts on your part in terms of visibility and how you might have been able to, uh, to, to leverage that activity? To, 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 to literally see funds that you could have, additional funds that you're able to take in for additional spiking ac activities that may have come off the everyday low price for a, a temporary period. Uh, yes, uh, Rick, really in our world, uh, the vast majority of what we do is EDLC uh, with Walmart. But, you know, when, when, as the year is halfway through and closing, uh, as there's favorable mix opportunities that frees up, uh, perhaps uh, can free up some additional investment, having visibility to that early on uh, enables you to, uh, to put that in play, uh, whether it be through a, a promotion or some other activity. Conversely, uh, if you have a, a challenging mix uh, in play across an EDLC, a cool environment, you can have those conversations early on uh, and they're always better to have in, in June or July than, than in November or December, as you can imagine. Absolutely. And uh, I'd like to also introduce uh, Doug Lucan, who is also with Lotus. And so uh, we're uh, on, our, on, our, on our slide, we're looking at ditch the spreadsheet. So, uh, Doug, would you like to kind of give us a couple of ideas on how you're able to ditch the spreadsheets? I know you're not on the, on the Walmart account, but... Um, what happened in terms of your, your journey to ditch spreadsheets and try to start tracking all this information in a more cohesive, uh, centralized uh, mechanism? Well, first of all, I think, you know, the ditching of spreadsheets really can apply to any customer, regardless of whether it's Walmart or, or any customer. Um, so, 
I know we're talking specifically about Walmart today, but again, I want to let the audience know that obviously a lot of this applies to any customer out there um, that you're working on. So, you know, I think we all can agree that doing things manually or, or offline via spreadsheets is not really a perfect solution. It's time consuming and many times results in errors or redoing work. Plus, people think differently about the same topic, and because of that, results in many different ways to, to track information. If everyone is doing things differently offline, there's really no clear line of sight across the organization to capture the information, and many times results in back and forth across departments to confirm whether information is accurate or even up to date. CPG Toolbox has brought a level of standardization and consistency to our business, as well as clear visibility on all financials down to the customer and SKU level. Additionally, you know, the tool is able to customize. Um, it's customizable to review um, event and plan ROI um, to really provide us with the ability to make better decisions on the fly. It's definitely made Lotus Bakeries more efficient because we're really eliminating uh, offline processes that we go through several times a year, and we're consolidating those really all into the tool. And I so know that, way uh, the, Doug, before, before you go into this next slide, I know, John, you were kind of telling me the way you used to uh, uh, manage deductions where you called in to, uh, to finance uh, on a weekly basis and spent what several hours or so going through spreadsheet uh, hell, so to speak, trying to compare your spreadsheet to the finance guy's spreadsheet. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yes, Rick. So I, I've been on both sides, you know, working internally with the customer teams, and then conversely, you know, in the role that I am now in the other direction. And it, it it's challenging enough, uh, you know, having the business conversations and making the business cases to do what's right for the business without having to spend an hour or two hours every time you get together to make sure that you're comparing the right data, be it in the right format, during the right time period, um, or just how you look at the information. So having your, not just your salespeople, your internal marketing team, trade marketing team, finance team, forecasting team, having everyone work from the same playbook to me is the biggest win that, that, that you have uh, from, from the system. Great. Thank you. I know at, the, at my heart I'm actually a sales guy, and as a sales guy, I like bright, shiny objects. Doug, you want to tell us a little bit about some of the things that you've actually been able to do uh, with uh, dashboards? Yep, sure. Um, you know, one way that, as I talked about standardization, one way that the tool provides some consistency and standardization is really the ability to customize dashboards and reports so that everyone looks at the same information in the same way. You know, we've talked about the time involved um, and the different ways that people may evaluate and look at their business. Um, and as we talk to internal folks, you know, that causes a lot of confusion sometimes because people aren't thinking the same way and evaluating their business the same way. Um, the, the way the, the tool can give you that opportunity to have that consistency so that everybody's looking at the business in the same way and it eliminates that confusion. We were able to do this at Lotus because, again, we were in that same position where everybody was looking at the business in a different way. So by customizing our reports and dashboards in one consistent way, we're now all speaking the same language and all looking at the information in the same way. It's available to our management team, our senior leaders, at any time, and they have, again, that word visibility into our latest plans and thoughts on all of our volume and spend. Rick and his team have been, you know, they've not only brought the consistency and the visibility and the efficiency to our business, but they've built in so much organizational capacity, allowing us to run a lot of our offline processes right in the tool. So again, it's not only trade and financial, um, but also there's an arm that we've been able to utilize on supply chain that um, I'll mention a little bit later, but again, there's additional functionality within the system that uh, can provide an, an eye into uh, forecasting.
as well. Great, thank you. So uh, the, the, the key thing I guess that the dashboards are providing are the ability to see trade spending at the very lowest level, but also all the way up the organization, whether it be at a SKU or at a brand or at a territory or even a total company uh, trade spending level. And I think that's an area where Doug has really taken a, a great deal of leadership and uh, uh, um, has helped to sort of put the tools together to sort of leave that what we, can, what we constantly call spreadsheet hell to move into a more consistent ability to look broadly and widely across the organization. What that allows is it allows the organization to have a, a, a sort of a, a company-wide or organization-wide visibility on spending and profitability. And so if, you know, if, if, if Walmart, for example, represents 25% of your, of your actual volume, but 35% of your spending, that, that visibility needs to be there. There needs to be some ideas about that. And can you actually see that level even on an individual SKU? Do I know uh, on a SKU basis, uh, is, my, is my spending even more disparate um, in terms of my share of spending at a given account versus my share of volume at that account? So the ability to see that information profitably uh, uh, at the SKU brand, territory, and company level allows the, the ability to move funds around. And so, uh, so if, as you begin to see where you have uh, excess funding and opportunities, spreadsheets, are, it's hard to see that sort of globally within a spreadsheet environment. And so um, the, uh, the ability to also see and, and understand how these how this, the, the sales and whatnot are being managed with, within deductions, for example. So, so uh, the deductions are always the, the, the nasty thing that has to happen whenever, a sale, whenever additional funding is, is offered, oftentimes until the funding mechanisms catch up into the internal systems, deductions start to fly hot and heavy. And so is there an ability to manage deductions and uh, Doug or John, you may even want to speak in, jump in and speak about how is your efficiency in terms of managing deductions now with the ability to have visibility through approvals and to, 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 to be able to connect your proofs of performance and whatnot directly to that deduction electronically, thereby cutting down tons of paperwork that you can put into an electronic mechanism. Yeah, there's with the system, you know, there's funds that you have to make available without getting, you know, too specific. There's funds that need to be made available for specific events. And as deductions come in, our financial department reviews those deductions and aligns them with the promotional events that are in the system. And if there's no event and no funding available, then the question is raised as to the validity of the event. Should we be paying it? Um, that type of thing. So a lot of that is handled really kind of on the front end so that you don't run into those post audits years later. Great point. Um, so I know, John, you were giving me some ideas and thoughts uh, uh, a couple of days ago about, uh, about global visibility. And I think you have some, some, some interesting ideas about global visibility of, uh, across the organization. And why is that important? And I know you've had some experience even, even in past uh, companies you've worked with about that. Any thoughts on that you'd like to offer? Yeah, I, I think the, you know, the, the bullet points here on the page you know, speak to it, but um, certainly greater visibility uh, from a forecasting perspective uh, and on the financial metrics, be it um, sales or, or spending, uh, is, uh, is a powerful thing. And of course, that plays out across all departments. So Doug spoke a little bit about the enabler uh, in terms of deductions. Really, I engage with, we have a financial team that, that handles deductions, and really my engagement with them is much more on an exception basis now uh, in that they have the same visibility that I have to the entire plan, be it Walmart, be it any of my, my respective customers. Um, I, it gives me a chance to do more value-added activity, be it insight, be it selling, customer face time, uh, you have it. Uh, and then in those uh, rare occasions where you might have you know, temporary tra trade infusions that are maybe outside of the normal box, it creates an environment for everyone 
uh, trade marketing and sales uh, in the field to have visibility to how those, those funds are being uh, deployed. And as we talked earlier, to quickly monitor your, your, your volume, your accrual, and your spend, and uh, where needed, uh, you can make course corrections um, you know, in real time. Great. Thanks, John. And I know, Doug, without being too specific about the COPA process, um, are, are, is Lotus in a one fund situation, or in, are you in multiple funds? We are in multiple funds. So we can divide um, our business down into various buckets, and the tool allows you to um, align your funding with those particular buckets and track your funding against those buckets um, just to make it easier to see where the spending is going. Really, you know, as real time as information is put into the system. Um, we're on, um, you know, a couple times a week type of a, an upload, so we see it pretty regularly, um, and we get, you know, almost almost real time visibility to volume and spending in terms of, you know, what's happening with our business. Great, thank you. So, uh, if you want to, uh, uh, you probably already spoke to some of this, but uh, if you want to kind of maybe give a couple of final thoughts then on some of your successes here on this last slide, then we'll uh, quickly be able to go to questions and answers here in a few minutes. Sure. Yeah, you know, at, at Lotus, we, we definitely embraced the CPG Toolbox uh, trade promotion management tool um, because we really needed the efficiency, plain and simple. Um, we were operating, I'm sure, like many companies, in a manual or an offline type of an environment. And as we've said multiple times today, that just kind of leads to extra time away from selling, confusion, back and forth with finance, um, and all of that. So really by putting all of our information into the tool, um, we put it in, we maintain it, and really that's it. A lot of our financial reports and financial reporting is driven off of that, so we don't have that manual process that we have to go through, an LE and a budget process, so to speak, multiple times a year. So it saved the company uh, a lot of time and from an efficiency standpoint. Um, you know, another thing that we've done, as I spoke a little bit about before, is we've really re-engineered um, our forecasting process through the TPM tool. And, you know, it was, again, a manual process for us. And we've been able to take the data within the system um, and really align that to when the product actually has to ship in order to support the trade events that we've entered into the system. The tool has that capability. Um, and so we've built that into the system as well. Um, and again, Rick and his team has is, is been very great to work with in terms of customizing to our business where a lot of these larger tools that you find um, are kind of pretty fixed in their ways and you almost have to customize your business to the tool. It's the opposite with CPG Toolbox and that's the, the beauty of it for us um, and why we've embraced it so well. One last point, um, you know, we're a global business like I'm sure a lot of many other companies are um, and the tool has the ability to cross multiple currencies um, and because it's been such a success for us in the United States, we're looking internally to adopt this in other countries. As well as local currencies and local uh, language as well. So what, will we, what have we talked about today? So what are the tricks that, uh, to, to sort of manage trade at Walmart? And we think it's visibility. Probably couldn't use any, any other word more strongly than visibility because it's visibility in the amount of money I have to work with, how profitable or how unprofitable are my offerings currently, do, and does that allow me then to have the correct and optimal mix of profitability? So, you know, you, you can have the, the fast-moving lower profit skews, but do I have the right higher profit, perhaps a little slower velocity skews, and, and am I leveraging the money that's accrued on those lower velocity but higher profit SKUs to try to drive the velocity up on those SKUs? And of course, we've talked about ditching the spreadsheets and trying to do something in a more cohesive manner. And then knowing your spending levels at all levels, and are, are you able to sort of speak to my percent of sales and my percent of spend at any given account? 
And then global, again, that word visibility is pretty critical. So some of the final things we want to just kind of speak to, and I've got a couple of questions that we want to talk about. And if, can I see my accruals and spending um, at the, uh, and profitability at the SKU level quickly and easily? Ask yourself that question. Can you do that? Uh, or number two, do I really know the cost of our EDLC offerings at Walmart? How, what is that answer? And then, uh, I guess finally, then does forecasting take a ton of my time? And a better question is that, is my forecast completely divorced from my, uh, my trade promotion plan? Oftentimes, we see uh, a forecast that's, that takes a week or so at the end of every month for an LE process that very often has very little or even a, only a coincidental connection to the actual trade plan that is in place. So, uh, so we've had a lot of fun talking here, and I've, I've, we've, got, we've had one question here, and Doug, you might be the, 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 the best one to answer this question. And, and so Dan asked, could you address some of, the more, uh, uh, some of this more specifically to trade spend and Walmart? How is it different from Walmart and other retailers? Maybe you and John can, uh, can tag team on that one, Doug. Well, I think the trade spend um, process um, and how we go about, you know, entering events and entering trade promotions is the same, whether it's, you know, Walmart or any other customer. I personally deal in the drug uh, business, the drug channel, as well as distributors. Um, and the system has the capability to not only have, you know, uh, put in events for distributors, but also the retailers that are underneath the distributors where you're entering volume and you're entering promotional events for the retailers and it all rolls up to a distributor number um, that you can track, uh, but then you can also track it down to that retailer level. So again, in terms of specifics, I'm not sure if that answered the question, um, but in terms of entering the events, the process is all the same um, in terms of what we do. Um, I can talk to it a little bit, Doug. Um, and, and the majority of uh, the value that I drive working with Walmart from the system uh, is similar. Uh, but what's a little bit different, and I think your question alludes to this, is, is most you know retail partners are, are in more of a high-low environment, uh, more more event intensive versus the EDLC approach that uh, that most suppliers adopt with Walmart. So it's a little bit different uh, in terms of the intensity of the, the work and the, the data entry. But on the other point, uh, from forecasting and the incredible uh, amount of time that that could otherwise take if I was managing multiple spreadsheets or a spreadsheet with a separate trade accrual system, uh, the financial visibility, uh, occasional trade uh, deployments, um, marketing investments, uh, which are separate from trade, and then just the overall enterprise-wide visibility, it's the same. Um, so, I, you know, from my perspective, uh, the value that you get in, from working uh, with the system with Walmart is a little bit different, but I think there's more commonality uh, across the trade landscape with other customers than, the, than there are differences. Great. Thank you. John, I want okay, to turn it back to you. Other, you may have some questions as well. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I do. There are a few questions here that come okay. in uh, for you, gentlemen. One is, uh, what is your most difficult task with Walmart, tracking accrual balances or tracking SKU profitability? Maybe that's directed to you, John. Um, you know, that's a, a good question. Uh, and the choices were what, uh, profitability versus accrual balances? Uh, tracking accrual balances or tracking SKU profitability. Um, you know, I'd say it's probably the, the, the profitability component. Uh, I'd say that, that um, you know, the balances, you know, the, the, the one thing that's going to change your accrual balance with Walmart, the most significant thing really is mix. I think a system like this makes that very easy uh, and, and very real time. I think that the visibility that you get from a profitability perspective around the decisions that you might make or in many cases might otherwise not make, uh, it, having that visibility enables you to make much smarter choices, uh, be it around distribution, be it around promotion, um, you name it. 
Okay, another question <clears throat> was to talk about uh, using spreadsheets in your efforts to track deductions and profitability. We, uh, we used to use spreadsheets to track deductions. Um, we had one massive spreadsheet that we used for all of our customers, and we had um, a gentleman who was working with our deductions who would manually enter that. And you can imagine the time involved to do that, um, to go back and track it, and then obviously using spreadsheets, it's more of a manual process where now he's putting the information directly into the system. And again, you can see it as real time as he's putting it in, um, in terms of where you are um, from, again, your spending and uh, ultimately your profitability. So it just eliminates not only the manual entry into the spreadsheet, he's putting it into the system, but then you're getting that immediate return on you know, the time that he's putting in there by seeing your levels of spending and your profitability ultimately versus spending more time on a spreadsheet to take the information he's put into the spreadsheet, put it into another spreadsheet to be able to calculate your, your spending and your profitability. Excellent. Okay, well thank all three of you. That was really excellent. And if anybody else has uh, other questions, you can uh, email them to any of the three gentlemen on the screen right now, to John, Rick, or Doug. Their email addresses are on the screen. Thank you all again uh, for a very fine webinar. Our next